use technical analysis to help you predict the markets? Okay, yes, I do, but it's what need to be careful because some people overuse things, and I think when you use a tool and you overuse it, actually, you know, a strength can turn into a weakness. So just to be clear for those that are watching, I like I use charts, and I first started getting into charts back in the very, very early days because the banks were using them, very, very simple charts. Um, for those who remember a program called Lotus 123, that was like an early day version of Excel. Lotus 123 was a spreadsheet, so you could put numbers into it and it would you could draw a chart, you could extract a very simple chart or graph, as you say, in the UK. Um, so since then, of course, there's been various other things added and obviously technology is much, much quicker. But yes, I do use technical analysis, but I don't sort of just really, you know, short term with technical analysis, things can be a little bit random. What I'm looking for actually is trends. And if you imagine a chart, it's a bit like a picture. And if you think of it, it's a bit like personality, it's a person. Um, so you can have a person that's very up and down, um, or you can have somebody who's like slow and steady and plods along. And that's what I try to do, or I use technical analysis or charting for, to try and get a, an idea of that character, what's going on with that stock or FX or whatever it is. So going back one step, how did you first discover technical analysis? So it was through the banks and I, you know, I'd start to see the very, very early charts. In those days, Bloomberg wasn't around yet, but Reuters was around. Then there was something called Quotron. And again, it was currency trading when I first started anyway, it wasn't stocks. And then there was something called the Investors Chronicle, which is still around today. And Investors Chronicle used to have graphs or charts printed every Friday. Um, so that's where I started to see sort of charts and graphs and I thought oh, yeah I get the idea because I always found it was probably easier to work with a picture than it was to work with a series of numbers so that's how my very very first. Why do you think technical analysis works is it for that very reason? Um, well first of all a lot of people use it so sometimes it can become self-fulfilling you know um, if something like what's called a moving average if a lot of people use a moving average then it can become important um, Again, it's not the be end and end all. You know, there's some people that say, no, I've, ne I've made lots of money, I've never even looked at a chart. Um, but what to me, it gives a representation, an idea of whether something is, say, is trending up, trending down, going sideways. Um, and it's a picture. And, you know, they say a picture is a thousand words. And I think that helps. Can answers really be found in charts then if the past and the present and the future are also unique? Yeah, really good question. A lot of people say, oh, it's tea leaf reading, it's psychic stuff and all the rest of it. And it's said, well, when you're looking at a chart, people say, well, that's what's happened already. What's that going to be the future? But history repeats. And what we find is, um, especially when you've got, say, a stock that Buyers and sellers congregate at certain prices, which is basically called support, so where people think, right, I want to buy it at this price, or resistance, which is a ceiling where people say, you know what, I want to sell at that price. So what the chart helps you do is identify those sort of points, whereas if you're just looking at REMA numbers, you probably wouldn't see it as clearly. So yes, the, uh, things repeat, that's the easiest way to put it, is why um, now, if you've got something that's new, say a new issue where a company's just come out, you don't have any track record, so that's where charting doesn't work. I tell you another place to be careful is small companies where it's very illiquid, um, whereas maybe one trade goes through and then you don't see anything go through. So a lot of small companies, uh, the charts are very boxy, so then it may not work as well, and that's where maybe fundamentals are more important. But there's certainly merit uh, for you to look at technical analysis and charts. So have a statement here, so if we can find out whether you disagree or agree with it and why. Technical analysis is a mathematically accurate representation of past prices. It has no bearing whatsoever on future prices. Yeah, is that, that's actually true because if we look at what happens with a chart, it only goes up to the price right now. It's not, it can't um, project in the future. However, there are little tools and little tricks and what we can do is to extend that. So if something's been going, say for instance, in an uptrend, we can draw a line to get an idea of where that um, future can be. But the truth is, yes, you know, it is only showing us um, as far as the past. But there are some little tools and little tricks that we can use to get an idea. Nothing's perfect, Alex. You'll never find a system that's going to work 100% of the time, and nor does it need to work all the time. Um, because as long as you make more money on your winning trades and you cut your losing trades short, 
Um, it doesn't matter, you know, there's, there's going to be trades that are going to throw you out completely. You think, you know, that's not what I expected. Um, but as long as they're relatively small and you haven't put your whole bank on it, then you're okay. Do you believe in the random walk hypothesis, which basically says that whatever we do will be 50% right 50% of the time? I think short term, a lot of people that I've seen have tried to trade currencies um, or trade stocks and they use what are called tick charts and a tick chart literally is very, very short term, so it's maybe a second if not like that there. And they think they've got some sort of an idea what's going to happen in the next because if you take minute to minute it can be very very volatile very very hard so I believe very short term there is certainly a lot of noise and randomness and I've seen people think they've made money and all they've done is literally flip a coin or they've been lucky um, so you know there is some element of that but I think in the longer term there certainly is I wouldn't say markets are totally random in the long term no can we use technical analysis to make trading decisions like when we enter a market or when we exit one? Yeah, we can. And in fact, more and more people are doing that um, because, you know, what they call robots or basically, you know, uh, system trading. So what a system trade is, you've got a set of rules. You know, you've still got to have that set of rules. So it might say buy on a Monday, sell on a Wednesday, buy at this price, sell on this price. And then you can program that in. You can obviously see how it's done in the past. Um, again, of course, you know, past doesn't equal the future, um, but there are many systems now that will work purely on price, purely on mathematics with a, a set buy and a set sell um, and will take no account of any news, take no account of if the president's been shot or anything like that. It will just basically take price action only um, and those systems can work and do quite well. So when it comes to technical analysis and indicators, some people are worried about how to use them. Do they have to know everything about them? Are some of them useless? What would be your best advice? Okay, humans being humans, we always want to over-engineer everything. And I say, one, don't worry, you don't need to know about all of them. Certainly I don't, and I don't use them all. Uh, stick to some very, very basic ones. There's lots of information you can get on the internet, off uh, the spread betting site. And don't over-analyze. So you've got to remember, Alex, you've only got so much data so you've got like price high low uh, open close and obviously time and all these indicators do they dice and slice that information and the more sometimes you can dice and slice and the other thing is though some people I've seen that they, they put all these indicators on they get confused um, you know paralysis by analysis they call it because you've just got so much stuff and it's very rare it's all going to line up properly um, so yes, by all means, use some indicators, but don't overdo it. And in fact, the fact that you know, don't know all about them, that's actually a good thing, so don't worry. Do you have any favourite ones? Um, I still think basics, things like moving averages have always done well for me. Um, things like, you know, just generally trend lines. Um, you know, they've always worked well. Some people have used MACD in the past. I've never really, there's one called RSI, relative strength, that... I've never really used, but some say they've had some benefits from it. But really, to me, it's just been moving average and basic trends have always um, been good, steady staples.